Hi there. Welcome back uh, to the study for another uh, reflection. And uh, today we reach uh, Genesis 12 to 21, the story of God calling Abraham. And he, uh, and he calls Abraham out of everything he's known, um, out of the home of his ancestors into a foreign land. And Abraham leaves everything behind to, to trust God and to follow God. And yet, when God starts speaking to Abraham about the promises he has for his life, Abraham really struggles to take them seriously. Uh, God says, uh, I will make your family, your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And Abraham laughs, because what a ridiculous thing to say to a man in his 90s, his late 90s, uh, who hasn't got any children, let alone grandchildren. And Abraham can't believe it to begin with, but God encourages him, says, I can do it. And so Abraham trusts and he believes and he struggles with that trust and he struggles to continue believing. And then uh, when Sarah hears that this is God's plan, that she will have a son, uh, she also laughs, a laugh perhaps uh, mixed with the pain of being childless in a culture and society that valued women little more than their ability to have children. And so she laughs and she can't believe it. And she struggles with her unbelief. And time and again through the story of Abraham and Sarah, we see them struggle with their, with their trusting in God, that God could do something so wonderful, so marvellous, as to give them descendants more numerous than the grains of sand on a beach, more numerous than the stars in the sky. They can't really trust that God will do something so wonderful and so magnificent. It's so beyond their understanding, it seems ridiculous. It seems ridiculous that God's plan to save the world would not be through some mighty act of power, but by the birth of a son that seemed impossible. But they do trust. And one day they find that they're going to expect their child and the child is born. And they call their child Isaac, the son of laughter. They accept the the ridiculousness of what's happening to them, how absurd it is that people in their 90s should be having their first child. And they accept that God can do the impossible, the ridiculous, the, the heart's desire thing that so many of us think, well, God might do that for someone else. So God might enable someone else to have what they really dream, but he'll never, he'll never do that for me. My, my desire, my dream is too big. What I want is just impossible. But Abraham and Sarah get what they always hoped for. They get the gift of the child they had longed for. The impossible happens in their lives. They learn that the God who made the universe, the God who threw the stars into the sky, the God who made every grain of sand on the beach, for him it's really easy to make a child unexpected and unhoped for. And I guess there's the encouragement there that God can do the impossible, that he does do the impossible, that his plan is being worked out in ways that we can't understand. Why didn't Isaac uh, come along sooner? And for many of us who have lived with pain and tragedy and seen God not work the impossible dream that we hoped, there's the question of why not? Why not me? Why not us? Why them? And I think God is always seeking to invite us into that place of, of questioning and seeking, of struggling with our faith, of struggling to see where he's moving and where he's acting. But to know that God can do it should be our, our starting point, not uh, the point of despair, but a point of hope. Because what is the story of Jesus coming and saving us, if not the story of a child coming unexpected into the world, able to do the magnificent and the impossible, who continues to love us and show us mercy every day. So if you're struggling wherever you are today, struggling to see hope, 
struggling to see light at the end of a tunnel that seems to be winding on ahead. I think we need to be encouraged that God can and does do the impossible, that we need to seek him in prayer and seek him for the world around us. Amen. Uh, God bless you and I hope you have a good day and I hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.